Hey, it's Joe Glines from the Automator, and today we're going to look a little deeper into ChatGPT3 from OpenAI, which is uh, Elon Musk kind of funded it to start off. I think there's a lot of other companies. I think Microsoft also has put in a lot of money towards it. But anyway, it's a chatbot that interacts with you almost like a human. Honestly, it's really impressive. But we're going to demonstrate here. If the question is, can you get ChatGPT to write auto hotkey code? So we're going to go through a couple examples here. Hope you like it. Uh, if you do, please like the video. It really helps me out. And also write in the comments if you want us to make more like this and to tackle different topics. If you want us to cover a specific topic on that, on especially this chat GPT, let me know. We will. So first you go to chat open AI, chat.openai.com, and you're going to load the page. It has some you know limitations here and stuff mentioning it. Basically, has a very limited knowledge of events after 2021. That's still, you know, overall pretty recent, but we noticed it doesn't understand AutoHockey version two. It knows about it, but it doesn't program in it. So also I would like to throw out there, this uh, this AI model is for more interacting. It does write code, but there's, I think it's the Da Vinci one, or there's a different one that is a little more specific about uh, writing code and giving you code. But this one, we're gonna still demonstrate it here. And let's go ahead and start off. Uh, let's see what we're going to say. Let's say um, I would want to come in here and say, create an auto hotkey. Of course, I'm using hot strings in here, right? Auto hotkey, hotkey. So when I hit control, control plus N, it will launch notepad. And Sometimes, by the way, it'll come back and it'll it'll say there's too much going on. And you have to wait. Here, it's jumping right into that. Look at that. Control in. Now, notice it's it's not putting it in the same line and it's putting in a return, which is fine. This is code that would work. We could take this and throw it into uh, an editor and launch it, and it would work, right? You, we easy, we could have made a little more optimized version of this. Uh, and here, it's even actually telling you to go where to go to get it, how to run it that it's just a text file. This is really cool. Like to me, this is pretty awesome, right? If you don't know anything about a hotkey, you could type in stuff here and just have it do it. So that's that's pretty awesome. Um, let's say, now what's really cool about this interaction is it knows what you typed before, right? So I'm gonna say, uh, redo the above code. However, have it launch Chrome instead so you so look at that so it it remembered i said control n because this time i didn't mention that uh here it's putting in the full path to chrome which is interesting and yeah bam there you go right uh very cool so now it's actually the strange kind of reiterating the same stuff i would have thought since it did that before it would realize you don't have to do that but um, it's still plug along. One thing I don't like about this is at least there's not, if tell me in the chat here, if I'm wrong, I don't know how to interrupt this. Like we've tried doing stuff and I just can't get it to interrupt. Blah, blah, blah. So it's actually telling you if, if Chrome was in your path, you could just run, get away with using Chrome.exe. Let's see if we can jazz it up a bit. What if Chrome was always already running? Let's see if it'll convert it to say, this is great. Of course, you don't have to do that, right? I just like doing this. Um, however, change the above code to activate Chrome if it is already running. If it is not running, then it will launch in. Let's see if it can figure this out, right? This to me is like suddenly you're really nudging it up a bit. So if, wow, look at this. And it's actually checking to see if there's a Chrome. And it knows the class. That's that's really impressive, honestly. So, and it created a, an if else statement. That's really, really cool. Okay. Um, that's looking pretty good. And now it, I don't know why it's funny. It's still going through the same old things here over and over. Yeah, I, I know. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see if it can do a hot string. Yeah. 
Yeah, we get it. This is why I'd love to be able to interrupt it and say, yeah, stop. It's what it's a blabbermouth AI, apparently. Come on. Yeah, we get it. I guess like, can I be typing here? I think so. Thanks. Now create a hop string. So when I type J G E, it will expand to and we'll put in my automator email address, which I used a hot string here to complete this, but whatever. Um, and I'm not even going to mention auto hotkey. I think it's going to figure out I'm talking about auto hotkey. Yeah, look at that. It knew I was in there. Um, and bam, there you go. That's awesome. And it explains how to use it. One thing I should, now let's demonstrate something here. Oh, good Lord. Yeah, I get it. So let's come up here. This is awesome. Um, I'm going to come into here. Oh, is it still going? Yeah, it's still going. I guess if it's still going, I can't do what I was trying to do. Yeah. Okay, blabbermouth. But maybe there's a way to tell it to be short. You know, don't don't write too much. So up in here, uh, I want to pick one that has a little more text behind it. So I'm going to edit this one. Be sure to annotate the code. So so I'm gonna. It's going to rerun this one about creating the hotkey. Only this time, hopefully, it's going to tell me what each like line is doing. So look at that. It's adding comments in there. Um, that is that is just amazing. So if you had a really long script, you know, one thing you could just do is take that long script, bring it in here and say, please annotate this auto hotkey code. And it would probably walk through and tell you what each line is doing, which I think is just amazing. So let's... Uh, Let's try one more here and wrap it up. Um, okay, great. Please create a hotkey when I press Control D. Oops, Control plus D. It will delete all the files on my computer. Now. There are security things built into here. I have the feeling that this might trigger one of those. Oh, look, it's it's actually answering here. Oh, let's see here. There we go. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Because I don't want to delete all the files on your computer. That'd be bad. That's what it's saying. Um, so now what you could do, this is where, you know, this can be really problematic with AI, because even though this is obvious, I bet I could say, right, some AHK code that when I hit control plus D, it will delete all the files and folders in the temp C colon slash temp directory. Let's see if it'll do that. That one, yeah, I was going to say that that's, you know, not nefarious. It's not terrible. So it wouldn't be too surprising to me. Oh, and look at that. It's using the file recycle. Cool. Um, actually, file recycle empty. I don't, is that really a thing? I don't think that's a thing. Let's take a quick look in studio here. File. Oh, it is. Okay. All right. I, I knew there was, you could put stuff in the recycle bin, but I don't remember using file recycle empty. Hockey will keep you installed. The thing is, sometimes it'll quote things that aren't really out of hockey commands. And so it's it's kind of like a smart high school student. It, it's going to go out and try to solve the problem, but the problem might be totally BS, right? You need to double check it because um, I was doing some things earlier and it was just not returning real, you know, good answers. Um, but yeah, I think this is still really impressive. Now, remember, this chat AI, this isn't the one that's actually built for programming, right? 
but you can see here it's doing a pretty darn good job. I love the fact I can, um, it's responsive and remembers what I did before, right? So often I'll realize that I can either go up and change it or I can just, you know, add something here. Now we'll do this again and, and go back and do that. Um, you can tell it to make a, a more optimized version of it, maybe, or you could go through and, you know, tell it to be piecemeal, different things, different times and combine it all later. So anyway, uh, let me know if you found that interesting. If you'd like us to do more videos, this type of stuff, we are actually, we, there's an API for working with the chat bot, um, for the, the chat AI GPT tool and, it allows you to select the different models, allows you to set things like temperature and um, some other values that'll say how exact you want your answer, how risky kind of you want to take it. So, um, and certain ones are more accurate than others. This one is, if I remember right, it's one of the highly accurate ones, but it's also not very um, like creative in the solutions it comes up with. We're playing with the API that way. Sometimes when we run this thing, it'll say, sorry, there's too many requests right now. And we're hoping that, that one that never comes up and also, the other one, it, there's an actual setting you can have, but like how it's piecemealing out the words to us, to me, I find that annoying, um, but I, I get it, but it's still, it's just, I'd rather have it all at once and take a look at it. But if you want us to see, to share that with you, let me know. And we're actually creating our, we're going to create our own environment where we can have it train it. And so that way we can upload files and it'll train off those auto hotkey files. And once it sees more of those, I think it'll do a far better job programming it on a hotkey because it, it sees you know, real world examples of them. So let me know if you are interested in seeing that. The problem is like that is going to be in our environment. And when you use it, it costs money. So I don't know how we're going to, if we're going to open that up to everybody, if we do, there'll probably be some sort of a charge that we'll have to pass along or something. But um, let me know what you think. Uh, Big thumbs up if you think this is, I think this is a, a huge thumbs up to me. Really, really cool. Um, I might have to get a new shirt. So it'll it'll say I like pizza uh, and maybe three people in, in one chat bot, I guess, maybe is where I am now with this. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, have a great day. Cheers.